Hi, this is Mira Foramina. And this is Eduardo Lima. And welcome, welcome to, to House, House of Mina, Mina Lima. Lima. Mira, I was just realizing that we next year is going to be 20 years that we are working together. And all because of... Well, all because of this boy wizard that's uh, been with us for all this time, since 2000, when I first started working on the first Harry Potter film as the lead graphic designer. And then Eduardo joined me on the second film. I apparate film. on the second film. From yes, Brazil. very useful. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure how far you can apparate, actually. But anyway, we, uh, it was a long time ago. We can't quite remember how you got there. Brazilian but. magic is quite powerful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we spent 10 years... Uh, developing the, all the graphic uh, style and the graphic props for the Harry Potter films and now the Fantastic Beasts films. But it all started with a letter. That was really the first prop that um, I had the pleasure of designing and of course it was the first piece of magic that Harry Potter entertained and was inviting him into this other world that he knew nothing about. So I feel like a little bit of a parallel there between his, his experience and mine. After working on all the films, uh, we had a maybe one year gap. No, gap year with... A gap year. <laughs> and after we were called back to help the Universal team, creative team, to develop Diagon Alley for Universal Orlando. And uh, two years later, Fantastic Beasts came. And, uh, and last year we were invited by Scholastic to... To reimagine what this world might be like on the page, which kind of came full circle for us because having had to think about everything for the screen and then everything for the entertainments in the parks to then bring it all the way back to the original work on the page was um, not only a privilege but also quite a challenge to, to rethink and sometimes unthink some of the things yeah. that we had taken for granted in the filmmaking because of course the book has its own... Its own um, dynamics and its and its own demands on on the reader so um you know of course you know, like when we are working in the films the, the 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 script is so different from the the book because lots of things had to be cut or adapted for 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 the film and uh, working now with the full content with every single word and every single situation and location was even more challenging so the result of all that effort was uh Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling and its sister, The Philosopher's Stone, and many other translated versions too, which is really exciting for us to see in different languages and how they might be interpreted. It's completely illustrated. Nothing would leave our studio without being fully illustrated and full of interactives as well, which is going to be really good fun for the reader um, to investigate how we might reimagine some of those pieces that have become, become so become iconic, iconic and, and some of the things will be surprises to the reader. And also, of course, another really important thing in this book, in the writing, is the element of humour. So we mustn't ever let go of those opportunities to, to bring a little humour. Hello. Password, please. <laughs> in, into the thinking, into the visual thinking and the, and the marks. But we always try and... Um, cover every single surface in design. So the, the, the way we, we start working on a book like this is, is the same way we work in, in the film. No? We read the script first and after we read the script again and where we go and mark and do all the lists of all the objects, graphic objects and dressing that needs to be done. For, for this book, we did the same. We read the book and after we read again, marking all the, the situations, locations, characters that we want to give life to. And, uh, but also trying to show elements, locations, situations that haven't been seen before. Uh, and that is one of the the, the nicest piece of the job as well, because it is where you can kind of put your mark 
on this book with the, the illustrations that have been chosen. Yeah, it is quite a challenge because, of course, this is a classic now, this book. Yeah. It's not a new work. We are working with something that has um, reached many, many um, households and minds. And um, so we very much, we're very privileged to have the opportunity to have our own uh, interpretation, visual interpretation of the, of the story. And when Harry is introduced to this, is such like an amazing uh, uh, moment and so iconic. And that's why everyone wants to go there because I want to go there. Yeah, <laughs> and actually in terms of sort of process of designing the book, sometimes we, we made, as a group, we would sit down and decide which pieces to illustrate first that could then help us uh, drive through this amount of material and I think that was one of the first pieces the, that yes. we thought of um, I thought about because uh, then it sets the tone so it sets the style and the mood and whether it's the sense of humor and of course then the characters will the characterizations will follow afterwards when we're thinking about designing a prop we're always thinking who made this when I say a prop, I mean a piece, an article that might be in a character's hand or they might find or they might buy. And with something like Harry Potter's letter, uh, it was kind of, it had, it had a, a dual purpose. It wasn't just what it made him do, but of course it told us as an audience a lot about where it was coming from. So we had to think about uh, the personality of McGonagall, how would she have written that letter, uh, which was kind of easy to do in the film because we had pl plenty of description. So we had to slightly unthink that for this book, yeah. but we also wanted to keep some of the familiarity that the readers will have with, should we, should we find it? Um, with, but, with, the with the letter itself. But also, you know, the, also we wanted to make sure that the letter didn't look too much like the, the letter in the film. We also did a little departure here because the first time we see it in the book um, is the hut on the rock. And of course, in, when we're making a film, we don't have the opportunity to show every single situation that's described in the book. Um, and it would have been really nice in the films to be able to show all the versions of the letter that Harry receives because he doesn't just get the one yes. at Privet Drive, he also receives them wherever he goes. Um, so it was a, a nice opportunity for us to to sort of take it to the next level. So in the same way that we do in films, we will try to be playful with how something from a, something like a magical school might, um, might be made and that it might not follow a traditional form of a letter. So all the information that you need is actually part of this same letter. Now, of course, we also had to think about what the insignia of Hogwarts would look like. And again, we didn't want it to, it couldn't repeat what we know already. So another great opportunity to have to think about identity of an institution like Hogwarts. And, and also we had to create the identity for all the houses as well, from Ravenclaw, Slytherin, Gryffindor and Hufflepuff. Thinking about Hogwarts, whilst we've got the legacy of the fantastic work that Stuart Craig did on the movies, uh, our work here is slightly different because this is a much more graphic representation and um, we're not creating a highly detailed illustration. So we're trying to capture the essence of, of situations or characters or places more than their exact yes. details. So because, Mira, do you remember when we were uh, finding out about the geography of the castle and how many floors and how many towers. It's so confusing, it's so complicated. So we try you not know, to kind of show at least the main places. Yeah, and having the, um, the interactive pieces in the book sort of gives us the opportunity to, to depart from something that's very traditional and actually go a little bit more playful, yeah. um, something that people can... I think discovery is really just a wonderful thing in, in, in a book if you can... Um, of course, a lot of readers might be coming to this because they know it already, but um, to be able to discover visual surprises as well as the writing is, is going to be, I think, a lovely yes. thing for, for children and maybe some adults too. 
So we, this is a little cross section of the school showing all the little, all the places uh, that are mentioned that Eduardo was talking about. And yeah, but that is just um, a little bit because it's so. Do we? We should provide enormous. a magnifying glass with, with, <laughs> with this page so you can see everything. So having the opportunity to design this new illustrated version of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone meant that we had to rethink some of the, even some of the objects and characters. And, and characters, yeah, um, but, and characters, we never done anything with characters That's true, before, yes. So. If we were doing graphic design for filmmaking, we didn't really have to um, have any conversation, visual thinking about characters or, or, or costume or, even places. or how do we yes. dress them and yeah. yeah so that I think that's probably been the biggest challenge actually is the characterization and and that was really great having that conversation backwards and forwards between the publishers and ourselves and um, about how best to to represent these yes. these characters that have um, have become so um, embedded in people's in people's minds but even some of the more Trivial things like the what, like Dumbledore's watch. We always want to bring in some of the some of the pieces. Oh, sneaky peek! Um, um, and I think you've probably you could probably show us. Speaking of characters, yeah, there's one us. the 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 most scary one. No, that is isn't that weird moment that he's still in my head. Up. Hello. I, of course, not being a proud, proud parent, you know, it's very difficult to to to, to find a uh, a favorite page. But there is one that is the introduction to the Weasleys oh, family. Ah, I was gonna choose that. <laughs> that is so it. is so sweet. But because of the yeah the Weasleys, you know, the Weasleys are. I don't know, they are the, the best family ever on a wizarding world. And even for Harry to be welcomed in this crazy bunch of wizards. And, but this is so lovely because it shows how they are so united, they are so together all the time. And you, Mira, do you have a favorite? Well, I think, again, it's about characterization. And, and actually, for us, apart from the letter, one of the first things that we had to design on the film was all the all the candy packaging for the trolley and um, we just love this idea instead of really featuring uh, this witch is just again something that you could just hear her rattling off down the corridor um, with all that stuff but again this this initial sense of wonder that Harry has for um, this completely other world this was an early illustration that had to, we had to really uh, examine yes. what our palette was going to be in the style that, that would shape the, the the rest of the book, so I think this kind of this captures a lot of, of a lot of the design decisions as yes. well. Yes, but also is a is a, a special moment in the in the book because it's when Harry and Ron becomes good friends and and uh, they will be friends forever. So yeah. that is the moment that they you need you need chocolate frogs. To, you to need that yeah. connect you yeah. As we live in London, you know, our, one of our favorite places that we uh, go to visit all the time is Diagon Alley, it's just down the road. Uh, but to uh, illustrate Diagon Alley was a different thing. But I think this is my favorite insert in this book. So to go inside Diagon Alley, what we have to do? Three up, two across. Welcome to Diagon Alley, Mira. <laughs> of course, a lot of these shops are described really intricately which is great for us um, in terms of um, iconic uh, shop names and familiar places that will, will become part of the story um, but actually thinking about how they how they look uh, is really up to the illustrator because not every single bit of description of color and detail is in the writing yeah. so it I think that's something that we found in the films as well which was really great as a designer was not having to be um, held to a particular description um, of how something should look, but more um, how it makes people feel or what the characters do in a situation. So, but we have um, all now we have um, Flourish and Blots are here, Madame uh, Malkins, Gringotts Bank, Quality yeah. Quidditch Supplies, and there's also there's an Easter egg here. There is an Easter egg in there, but uh, you'll have to go shopping in Diagon Alley to find it. Yes. <laughs> 
of course, now we designed all the, the, the shop front, but we also had to go inside the shops in Diagon Alley. So this seemed so, like a good way to capture them all, was to do a kind of um, doll's house section through a whole load of shops. And it's partly so that we can see as a reader all those details and really travel inside them all. But it's also to have that impact that we think Harry should have when he arrives, yes. which is just to be completely overwhelmed by the extraordinary array of, of magical products and um, things that he's going to need for this new life. So it's really a newness and about sort of like this revelation of something completely Poor boy, completely. no, he got so overwhelmed, you know, he had a letter to go to a wizarding school and go to a wizarding And then all that alley malarkey and, with the wand. Yeah. <laughs> and Ollivanders. But yeah, it's... So here I, you can see, you know, he's, he's, he's yeah, he's, he's so excited going to buy his robes, buy the wand, buy the books and... I think yeah. Eduardo and I both really wanted this because as children we would have, that's what I would have wanted to see yes. uh, uh, on the page, is to be a child and to just travel through every single detail. We both discovered when we first started <laughs> working together that, um, that details were really the things that made us tick and that we were from quite a young age making little shops, making details for shops and uh, as, as play. So I think this is a real sort of opportunity to um, display that kind of fantasy and, and to travel into And sometimes, world. you know, we say that you can hear this illustration, you know, that there is so much going That's on. That's actually here. something that we've been talking about a lot, is, <laughs> is there are some illustrations that you just open them and you can either smell them or hear them. And those are the moments where you think, oh, I think, I think we got that one right. That because right. It, um, you need, if there's like a, a, a crowd scene or something, you just need to be able to, to hear it. Of course, all these inserts are a very different design challenge from designing 2D images on the page. And we, we, we felt very much at the beginning that it shouldn't be a pop-up, traditional pop-up book, because there's enough fantastic yeah. paper-engineered books out there already that deal with that. This is more about um, transporting the graphic image into the next step in mm -hmm. a really really simplified way. So the graphics is always at the center of, um, of any design that you, you see. So um, there's a simplicity and an engagement that is um, available to the reader without feeling that they have to be, have a, a sort of high, high level mm -hmm. um, engineering aspect to them. There's some kind of nostalgia as well to do those kind of things with paper, because of course we have so many amazing apps and amazing tablets and stuff, but to have this on paper and... Yes, yeah. I, I, we very much feel, felt that this kind of book um, has a, re a special place for uh, readers in terms of a legacy and how they can keep this and treasure it and um, engage with it beyond it being just the written word. And I, I do think there's a special place in, in publishing for this kind of, um, this kind of book. But when we're thinking about the interactives, it is quite a practical exercise in geometry in terms of how we have <laughs> to uh, develop the pieces because obviously we're constrained by a very particular size. We're also constrained by the depth of the book because if something's too deep, then it's gonna pad out the book yeah. too much. Uh, we're constrained by perhaps the limitations of what how complicated it can be in terms of cutting. Um, so all these things are all working in three dimensions, speaking to each other w and pacing, so like where we put the interactives through the book, whether they're, we can't have them all clustered together, there has to be a, a good pacing of them. So uh, we've really enjoyed designing the books for their 3D element. Uh, whilst it's a 2D exercise illustrating, it's, this kind of book is a, a completely three-dimensional exercise yeah. in design. Um, and it kind of keeps all our minds very active. And of course, it's not just the geometry, but also how you can um, best describe a situation in an illustration and still make it interactive. Uh, so those are the fun bits, aren't they? But, but yeah. the, the process, we started like, sketching and also like cutting loads of different shapes and until we find the no the, the the best solution for that but also we send it to the printers and the printers give their feedback as well and they send the the final white 
model and where we go and add the graphic as well. This one in particular is not that complicated, I mean, but there are other ones. Uh, like this one is quite, is a, was a, there's yeah, a so quite whilst, complicated whilst mechanism. Well, she doesn't do very much. Um, it's still um, about getting everything in the right position um, and still making something that can be also assembled uh, yeah. in, in thousands. This is one of the things that we would have to think about quite early on in the whole process of designing the book, is how the chapter opener's style will serve to be a rhythm that can take the reader through the book. And we, that's together with the designer for the cover, that's definitely one of the first things that we were trying to establish. And, and here it was great because of course we had King's Cross to kind of inform, uh, give us some visual clues into how that style might be in terms yeah. of the Victorian architecture. Um, and once that was established as a, as a visual motif that could come through in every chapter opener, uh, we could then fill it with and populate it with all the um, Easter eggs that you'll find in that chap that reference that chapter. Um, so it definitely gives us a good kind of framework on which to um, hang important pieces from that chapter. Um, and I think it, it's lovely to have an opportunity to always think about every aspect of a book. So not just um, the illustrations that we've chosen to illustrate, but the page numbers, the chapter openers, the end paper as well, yeah? Yes. And, um, and the title page and, and the half title page. And so we're always trying to think about every single corner of a book um, to give the reader constant um, things to find. When we worked on the films, we were quite, we were a little bit naughty that we would have, because we had to <laughs> populate everything with content, the newspapers, the maps, the labels, the posters with material, quite often we would have to rely on our own stories um, to, to populate them. So we would put sometimes friends and family. No, yeah. And shameless, I put my name everywhere, especially on the Daily Prophets and all my family. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You not no, yours, yours is there, your family. <laughs> and, uh, and, but the final one that I, I always love to put is my mum, she's the secret editor of the Daily Prophet and she also wrote like several books for the Wizard She Witches also Wife. came back in Fantastic Beasts or went back in Fantastic Beasts. Yes, yeah. she was on a play on Broadway. <laughs> She's busy, she's really busy. <laughs> we are actually wearing the Mean Lima t-shirts in this but because we're in silhouette you can't quite see but that's, I'm just sharing that with you for today. So we're yeah. wearing the same train carriage with Harry and Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> Something that Eduardo and I do a lot when we're, when we're designing is um, collect and, and kind of examine uh, how books are made and, and bound. And uh, we've got things that are 100 years old, 200 years old, 30 years old. Um, and it's not just what's inside, but actually how they're, how they're made and, and how they're handled. And those are the things that inform us when we're making books for our films. Yes. Um, but even when we had to think about how this binding might uh, end up, we really wanted it to feel like a, um, a legacy piece that you could hand down to your children or your families and friends, um, fellow wizards. Uh, and that, knowing that, brings those decisions to the fore, like how we're going to foil it. And, and of course, thinking about the cover as well and how, um, as for, for a designer, for a book designer, it's really important to not just think about the cover, but of course, how it's going to sit in a shelf. Um, not just a bookshop shelf, but of course at home. So um, for us, it's always, this, this place here always has just as much importance as the, the front. It really needs to speak to that level of yeah. um, intricacy and, and how you might want to treasure this piece for a long time. So that's, that's our wish and our hope, and um, um, that's how it ended up with, with so much detail. Mira, it has been great talking about this book, no? the first Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Sorcery Stone, 
And while we are here at our brand new house, no? House of Mina Lima in a new location in Soho, London. But we do have an announcement for next year. We do. And the wonderful thing about our House of Mina Lima here is that we have our studio in the very same building as the gallery. So all the creative energy is whirling around and around this yes. building, <laughs> um, which right now is producing the very next book of, the, of Harry Potter. So Harry Potter and, and the Chamber of Secrets which we need to hurry up and do, but it will be ready for you in 2021. Fall 2021, yeah. So very excited and very grateful to be still part of this journey with Scholastic. Uh, and uh, we need to get back and get busy and, and, and reimagine all those special moments of Chamber of Secrets. Mm -hmm.